want to thank you so much for walking along with us and listening to these devotions every morning on the shepherd and the sheep. This will be the last devotion on this little series, The Shepherd and His Sheep. I trust that some things we have shared has really resonated in your heart and that you have a clear understanding now that you have checked yourself for sure that you are one of his sheep. If you're not sure, make sure today, call upon him, ask him to forgive you, come into your heart, cleanse you and save you and determine to live for him. Philip P. Bliss, whosoever cometh need not delay. There's no reason to wait. Why? Now the door is open. Enter while you may. One of these days, the door will be closed. The people in Noah's day, when Noah entered the ark and God shut the door, they could not get in after the, the door was shut. One of these days, the door of Mercy will be shut also. There are many today who wish that they had another chance. If you read the story and look of that rich man who said, Father, send Abraham to my father's house and tell my brothers, don't come. Why? Because he delayed it too long. Don't delay. Now the door is open. Enter while you may. Jesus is the true, the only living way. Whosoever will may come. The third stanza says, Whosoever will, the promise is secure. Whosoever will, forever must endure. Whosoever will, tis life forevermore. Whosoever will, may come. Whosoever will, send the proclamation over land and hill. Tis a loving Father calls the wanderer home. Whosoever will, may come. So in our last devotion in this series, I want to share with you that his sheep are his father's gift of love to him. Had you ever bought a gift for anybody? One that you love? I'm sure we all bought gifts for our children. Husbands have bought gifts for their wives. Wives have bought gifts for their husbands. Children have bought gifts for their daddies. We all buy gifts and we try to buy that in which we can afford that would be beneficial to some folks. You'd be surprised to know how much money a loved one would spend in a car as a gift for the wife or for a child who did well. You'd be surprised. Now, many of us may not be able to buy such a gift, but notice what the father gave to his son as a gift. And I like this. In John chapter number 10 and verse number 29, he said, My Father, which gave them me. I wonder who are the them. Of course, you'll understand that them are his sheep. Because the whole thing that we are speaking about is his sheep. That's what we are speaking about, the shepherd and his sheep. He said, the Father which gave them me. Jesus is the shepherd. He said, we are the sheep, those of us who have trusted him. He said, the father which gave them me, we would say to me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Now I say, what a glorious thought, just to think of this, that I am given to the Lord Jesus Christ by God the Father. Now, why would he give his sheep to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? He's the one who went to the cross and died for us. What a joy it is to know that we are given to Jesus by the Father. And not that we give ourselves to him. The Father took what belonged to him and he gave to Jesus. In John chapter number 6 and verse 37, he said, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. I used to worry a lot before time when I would preach and people would not give their life to Christ. I would feel bad. Many times I've gone out on visitation and I decided, man, this thing ain't working. 
and nobody ain't getting saved. So I don't know if I want to continue going on visitation until I learn that all God asks me to do is to communicate a clear gospel message. And this is what I'm trying to do now. Just communicate whatever I'm communicating to you clear from the word of God. And it is not in my place to save nobody. I can't even save me. Moreover, save anybody else. He says, but all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. So I have learned that just preach the word of God. And if one is given by the Father, he will come. It's just a matter of time. Old Brother Cyril would say, just keep throwing water down the hole. The rat will come out. Just keep preaching the word of God. One of these days, you'll be surprised to see how the person responds to the word of God. He said, all that the Father gave to me will come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. So it doesn't matter who you are. If you come to Jesus, he said, I will not cast you out. Now, this is humbling. To be his sheep, we must be given by the Father to his dear son. We too, when we are given by the Father to his dear son, become sons of God. I don't know if we ever stop and pay attention to this. We talk a lot about, I'm a child of God. Had you ever stopped and thought of that Jesus Christ is recognized as the Son of God? And here it is that we too are recognized as sons of God. You say, Pastor, why would you say that? Come with me to John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father have bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The writer say, I want you to understand that this is love. And this is love of a great degree, the greatest degree of love that you can think of. He said, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Not every one of us will go there and just meet somebody and adopt that person, our persons, as our children. When we are out to adopt somebody, we are looking for certain qualities in that person. But you know what? That is not true of all God. There was nothing good in me when he adopted me into his family. And if you may think that there was something good in you, let me tell you there was nothing good in you. For he said, all righteousnesses are as filter rags in his sight. He said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are first by one man sin into the world and dead by sin. So dead passes upon all men for all have sinned. There is a one of us, he said, from the sole of our feet to the crown of our head, we are spiritually sick. There are wounds that are open, putrefying souls that need to place that ointment, that spiritual ointment. We are not as good as we thought we were, but Jesus Christ accepted us when the Father gave us to him. And now we are called sons of God. Notice what he said. Therefore, because we are called sons of God, the world knew it as not because it knew him not. If the world had known him, then the world would have known his children. He said, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Some people may say, who tell you that you are a son of God? You are not a son of God. And if you ever will be a son of God, if you make it to heaven, then you'll become a son of God. That's not what he said. He said, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Oh, now, right now. He said, you don't look like him. You don't sound like him. But that doesn't change the fact that we are sons of God. Many of our children, they do things that we don't like, but they are our children. He said, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. What? That's why the Bible said that these old bodies of ours will be changed to incorruptible bodies. These old mortals will be changed. Oh, what a change will take place in our lives. Oh, I'm longing for this change. Oh, these bodies that we live in, hmm. corruptible, incorruptible. Oh, what a joy it is to know 
that one of these days we will change into bodies that we will never die again. He says, but we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And notice verse 3 of 1 John chapter 3 said, And every man that hath this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. In other words, he's saying, now that we know that we are children of God, we should live our lives in such a way that others would see and hear, oh, that we are sons of God. We ought to purify ourselves. We ought to stop those things that displease him and live to bring honor and glory to his name. To do that, we must confess our sin. For if we confess our sin, he's faithful, he's just to forgive us, and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a mighty God we serve. What a shepherd we have that is leading his sheep. And one day, the sheep will be with the shepherd. Oh, my class. Lord, thank you for the journey of the shepherd and his sheep. I pray that you'll use these devotions to your honor and for your glory. Would you have your way with each and every one of us with what we say and what we do? God, thank you for everyone that share. And may others be added today as you tug on their hearts to share. May they make their little group and share with their friends. We love you. Help us to check ourselves according to your word to see if we are your sheep. And Father, thank you that anyone can be of your fold if we would just follow the word of God. Have your way. Thanks again in Jesus' name. Amen. We will come back and share with you with another series. But for now, we want to say thank you for being with us and uh, with this series entitled The Shepherd and His Sheep. You can know that you are His sheep. If not, why don't you trust Him today? Ask Him to come into your heart and forgive you. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. God bless. Have a great day.